My name is Ryan Burke, and I just love guitars. That's why I'm traveling the whole world to try as many as I can. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum Road Case. This episode is brought to you by Tour Gear Designs and their amazingly small and flat patch cables. Big ear pedals, harnessing the cosmic power of cats to transport you into a new sonic dimension. Gun Street Wiring Shop, unlock your guitar's hidden tones with an expertly crafted custom wiring harness. And Harmony Guitars, USA made guitars with nitro finishes, high personality pickups, cool retro looks, and included mono gig bags and playability that punches way above their price point. Everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Han. I'm still here at JHS, as you can see. I am just surrounded, completely surrounded, by thousands and thousands, bazillions of pedals. And instead of making a pedal video, I'm going to make a guitar video. <laughs> because I like guitars. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that I have a thing for guitars? But anyways, there's some weird ones here at JHS. So I thought it would be fun to do a Weird Guitars of J Chess video. And here we are. And I'm starting out with kind of the signature guitar around here, the signature J Chess built Revelator. I think that this is a one-off, right? There's only one of them. Yeah, there's only one like that. Only one like this. Yep. Uh, and it is packed full of features and goodies that you know. Could, I, could we do the ultimate pedal demo guitar? That was the idea. The idea was, could we do the ultimate pedal demo guitar? I don't know if it's the ultimate pedal demo guitar, but I feel like this is a very Ryan guitar because it's packed full of stuff that I love. First of all, you've got the wild Starcaster headstock shape that Built uses. I'm a big fan of that. Offset body that's slightly unique in its own way, kind of like a blend between a Starcaster and a Jazzmaster sort of concept. Offset, wiggle stick, mastery bridge, four pickups. You know I love variety. You know I love funky combinations. And this has got it. You've got two mini buckers, Firebird pickups, on the bridge and neck pickup. Then you have interior pickups. You have a Jazz Master, not a, you have a Jaguar <laughs> pickup and a lipstick pickup. Man, you think this thing surfs? I bet it surfs. You have two completely different pickup selector systems here. You have a slider switch that gives you various combinations. And then you have these push buttons. I just, I adore these push buttons. I want to know where they came from. I bet they came from like car parts or something like that. They look like they would have been taken out of like an old, you know, Buick or something. I got to find this hardware and put it in something. But you flick the switch on and then you can individually select each pickup. I already filmed part of this demo and I didn't realize that uh, <laughs> when the uh, the switches are in, that pickup is off. Out is on. In is off. So here I am reshooting this thing, a little peek behind the curtain. Also, there are push pulls to coil split or coil cut these mini buckers here. So there's just a ridiculous wealth of options in this guitar. And it looks really cool. And it plays really nice. It feels good, it sounds good. Uh, let's go through all the settings, explore the pickups, and then I wanna get into a small pile of other guitars that I have behind me here. So I'll try not to take too long. I'm reminding me, I'm not telling you, I'm telling me that I have to do that. I've got uh, the Benson Tallbird Reverb, right? It's a Tallbird? Yeah, Tallbird. Tallbird Reverb. I'll flick that on and off, and I also have, uh, I don't know, some drive pedal here. It's probably not worth very much. So I'll jump between the two things. Here it is without reverb. I'm still on the lipstick pickup. Here it is with a little bit of very transparent overdrive for a little bit of color. All right, let's
let's rewind and go to the bridge pickup, and then we'll come back to that lipstick. So this is the bridge mini bucker. <laughs> Try it with reverb. That sounds great. Reverb and Quan Centaur. I think this is my fourth video here using the Klon Centaur on three of them. This is the most I've used the Klon circuit in my entire life. <laughs> and I'm doing it with the most expensive Klon in the world. That sounds great. On to the Jaguar pickup here. Ooh, that sounds like coming home. to that lipstick that I opened with. So jangly. That's probably the perfect position for a lipstick too. Just kind of south of the neck position. Not too fat, you know, not too necky not all the way at the bridge where it's gonna be way too bright and jangly. Plenty of jangle right there, but still full. That's a smart place for it. And then on to that neck mini bucker. Let's turn off the reverb. Coil cut. Was I doing the right one on the bridge? I wasn't. <laughs> you dork. Hey, note to editing, Ryan. Go back and erase that part. You're going to reshoot it. So jangly. Punchy. Jangly when it's cut. Let's go back to the bridge pickup and do the coil cut. Without the clawn.
really slow kill switch there if you want it with those little push buttons. You gotta push them twice. Let's do the neck and the bridge together, both coil split. Let's do all the pickups on. We'll start with the bridge. Plus the Jaguar pickup. Plus the lipstick. Plus the neck. Coil cut the neck. Coil cut the bridge. Turn off the claw. Turn on the reverb. off. <laughs> That's all the pickups in this really fun guitar. It's the only one that exists. You can't buy it, but I think it's a good, you know, starting point for a lot of ideas. I think there's a lot of validity here to the design. I kind of want to put a lipstick in that position and something else because that worked. And the Jaguar pickup worked really well in that position too. And those mini buckers are just kind of magical. Now this one doesn't look too weird at first glance. It sounds like it's gonna need a tuning. Oh yeah. All right, <laughs> tuning adventure. I'm all buttoned up now, I think. This guitar is not all that it seems. At first glance, it looks like a Les Paul style Electra, which it is, but it's got kind of a funky arrangement of knobs here, two big black switches, and then this rotary switch. What's going on? I haven't even tried this yet. Josh just explained it to me. There's a little trap door back here with a place for effects modules. These are the stock modules. Josh went and built his own modules with some of his own effects in them to drop in there, which is kind of a bonkers thing to do, but the sort of thing he likes to do, I guess. Uh, I put the fuzz and the tremolo in there. There's a control on each one. Might as well turn the fuzz all the way up, the depth all the way up. It's already up, good, on the tremolo. And I'll leave the volume where it is. Fun little trap door back there. Let's see what happens. Well, there's the fuzz. By the way, it sounds like this guitar is on permanent loan from Wilco. I don't know the whole story, but it sounds like that's the deal. beefy sounding fuzz. That is ridiculous. I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm going to turn down the fuzz. I've never turned down a fuzz in my life. I feel so humiliated. This thing sounds like it does not want to stay in tune. All right, let's try that tremolo circuit. 
Is it before or after the fuzz? I honestly have no idea. I think I put it in before. <laughs> Let's change that. There it is. Something's going on bonkers with the switching that I don't understand. There's the tremolo. There's a massive amount of fuzz. But then I turn off the tremolo and that reduces the amount of fuzz. Maybe it's just the volume boost from the tremolo into the fuzz. That's what's going on. Let's try some of these other modules. Apparently this MPC power overdrive is a circuit that a lot of builders go to when they start new drive projects. That's what Josh says anyways. And we'll do uh, the Milkman slapback echo. I don't know what the settings are on this. I'm gonna turn everything up. How about all the way up? <laughs> This flange here, the original flange circuit. Here we go. <laughs> Definitely funky. And to wrap it up, we've got a Tysco here. There's quite a few funky old Tysco K Silvertone style guitars around here. But this one just caught my eye. I'm not totally certain why. Maybe just because it was sitting in the corner there. Let's see if it works. sitar action on the high strings.
Right off the bat, I'm enjoying the sound of the pickups. I actually have one of these pickups in a drawer at home, like this exact model. I really ought to throw it in something. needs to be raised. I mean, it's got an adjustable bridge. That wouldn't be a hard fix on this. Totally not intonatable bridge. Interesting design. It's a screw with the saddles and you can adjust the sideways placement of the saddles, but not the intonation. Total, you know, mid-century department store engineering there. Smooth, fun tremolo though. <laughs> kind of cartoony sound there. <laughs> you know I like that. <laughs> you can hear the click of it. managed to stay in tune after that wiggle stick abuse. Really, it just needs this bolt tightened up. And then this wiggle stick would actually be pretty fun on this guitar. Ah, this one's pretty great. As far as old Tysco's go, this is one of the better ones I've played, I'll say. Just in uh, playability of the neck. It needs a little bit of tweaking of the action to get it dialed in better. The pickups sound neat. It's oddly tuning stable. I'm as surprised as anyone. What's that? I think Nick's been trying to sell that for like four years. <laughs> They're trying to sell this one. They've been trying to sell it for four years. Well, trying is a big statement. That's his blood. Nick's blood is on this. He had it like. Does that make it more valuable or less valuable? Less. I think a luthier worked it all out, like the whole thing, fret level. Mm. It's just rotting here if anybody's interested. Would you please give this guitar a Make home? An offer. I think. A, can you play Sarah McLaughlin? <laughs> <laughs> For only pennies a day. Pennies a day. Pennies. For a portion of a year, you could own this guitar. I'm sure they'll sell it for a decent price. I mean, this is, I'm not saying that this is the best guitar ever. I'm saying that this is a really decent version of a Tysco guitar. With a, it needs a little bit of tweaks. It just needs the action raised on the treble side of the bridge and just tighten down that wiggle stick. And you got yourself a playable Tysco here. That sounds good. Well, sounds interesting anyways. 
And it's light and it's fun and it's friendly. It's a fun wall hanger. I don't know. Every now and then I pick up a one of these old, you know, kind of department store guitars and I'm a little surprised. I'm it's not going it's never going to play the way a modern, you know, guitar plays. It's never going to play like that built or even on the electric, although the electric wasn't holding tune very well. It sounded very funky at times. But I don't know, there's something very fun about this and when you find a good Tysco, Silvertone, whatever. There's something fun about them. They're rut breakers, you know? You need to break a rut, you get one of these guitars out, and it challenges you, it challenges you to play in a different way. I say that and then I play exactly the same stuff I always play. having fun there. A little bit of a uh, Pink Panther theme action. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Uh, you know, go and subscribe to JHS as well. They've got, they've got hungry kids to feed. They need your subscription numbers. Click those links. Feed them those links. So anyways, uh, huge thanks to JHS for hosting me. And you know what? Stay grounded. Bye, everybody. <laughs>